Welcome to our lesson about motion constraints. In this lesson, we're going to be building a gear. Let's place our components. We'll bring in the cam first. Open, and let's drop it about here. Right click and done. Activate the constraint command. Mate type of constraint. Let's select this axis here. And this axis. Apply. And cancel out of the tool. Let's rotate our component now. And let's apply a second constraint. The mate type again, this face to this face. Apply and cancel. OK, let's place another component. We're going to bring in gear 2. Click open. Left click to place it. Right click and done. Activate the constrain command. Let's select this axis. There we go. And our second axis here. Apply and cancel out of the tool. Let's rotate this part as well. Constraint. Select this face and this face. Apply and cancel. Let's bring in our last component, gear 1. Open. Left click to place it. Right click and done to close the place command. And once again, we'll select the axis right here. And this axis, apply. And another mate, this face, and this face. It'll be a flush solution. Apply and cancel out of the tool. Before I apply the motion constraint, let's take a top view and adjust the gears so they're in the correct position. OK, activate the constraint tool again. Go to the motion tab. Under type, we've got two options, rotation and rotation translation. Let's use the rotation option for this example. I'll select this cylindrical face first, and then this cylindrical face here. The gear has a ratio of 2 to 1, as we see in the ratio field here. We're also able to enter the ratio manually if we need to, just typing in our input here. Next, we specify the solution, forward or reverse. Let's use reverse for this example. Apply and cancel out of the tool. Now when I rotate the larger gear, the smaller gear rotates as well. Let's apply a second motion constraint. We'll go to the Motion tab, Rotation Type. We'll select this face here and this face. Once again, we can adjust the ratio if needed by entering our value here. Let's use the Reverse option. Apply and Cancel. Now we're able to test our entire mechanism. Next, let's apply an angle constraint. Activate the constraint command. Let's use the directed angle option. For the first direction, we'll use the z-axis. Just select it right from the browser. Then we'll select this line for our second selection. Apply and cancel out of the tool. OK, let's expand gear 1. And right click on the angle mate, select drive constraint. Let's make it start at 0 degrees and end at 360. Now let's click Play Forward. Now we can see how our mechanism works. You'll also notice that we've got some small interference here between the teeth. We'll talk about how to analyze this in just a minute. You can follow the progress of our drive in the title bar. And we've reached 360. OK, let's expand the Drive Constraint dialog window. We can modify the number of repetitions here if you'd like the gear to rotate more than once. If you experience problems with the motion of the mechanism, let's go to the Tools tab, Document Settings, Modeling tab. Take a look at the Interactive Contact section. Currently, Contact Solver Off is selected. 
This option lets us analyze the contact between components. We've got a couple other options here as well, and we'll be exploring how to use all three of these. We can select all components, or we can use specific components if we set up a contact set. Under surface complexity, we've got a few options as well. We can use all surfaces, and this is the most CPU intensive option. It takes all of your surfaces into consideration. The next option is general surfaces. This option will ignore some surfaces, and this results in faster calculations. It's less CPU intensive than the first option. The third option is simple surfaces. The simple surfaces option reduces the calculation load even further. It ignores non-analytic surfaces, and this option is obviously less CPU intensive. Let's try this third option out just to see what happens. We'll select simple surfaces, all components selected, apply and close. Right click on the angle constraint, drive constraint. Let's play it. Here's an error message, can't solve at or near this point. Let's click OK. Let's return to the document settings window. Modeling tab, contact solver off, OK, apply and close. We'll be experimenting more with these parameters in our next lesson. This concludes our first lesson about motion constraint.